chapter 15 explanation of gravity and electromagnetic phenomena through our single field theory law of the functions of space in every real space continuous of all absolute continuity the geometric dimension directions to the extent of the course taken by the acceleration that characterizes it entail the cosmic act par excellence within its general ontology the directions of space that is the trajectory that every body included in said continuum and left to itself must follow have because they cannot help but have the special geometry of the form generated by the continuous difference of two functions as the sensible form of two infinitely close times. Two infinitely close times imply, of course, two spaces in the measure of two physical states that tend to be identical. The difference expresses the geometric direction of space in the measure of the course carried by the acceleration that characterizes it. From this cosmic unevenness of time in their space functions, the ontological difference between E and E, comma, is deduced is deduced in the same reality from the geometric result of both static contents. And for all this, the acceleration is the ontological clamping of those physical states that tend to be identical as they are considered closer with the gym geometry that takes the course of G in the continuum that the said function engenders. The difference between these functions does not imply the result of the comparison of two magnitudes within the field of the pure dimensional, but rather that between two cosmic intensities and the supreme act of forming between them a single and the same variable space, our relationship organized within such an abstract field can however have a graphic illustration to make it more intelligible in the spirit of the schematic imagination. Now, if our law of space functions is true when applied to the elliptical gravitational field of the Earth, the difference G has to be of the form g equals km divided by v squared. If on the other hand the value for g does not come in the form of km divided by v squared, the law is false and with it our field theory. Let there be three sensitive points b subscript 0 of terrestrial space and such that B corresponds to the surface of the earth and the other two, the B comma and B subscript zero, at a greater elevation or distance with respect to the same surface referred to. These differences are for B, the one corresponding to the earth's radius and for B comma, the V comma, B subscript zero, it's clear that it can have any magnitude of distance, since it only entails a point that is insensibly relative to the other two. Here's a graphic summary of these elements and their relationship in the space of which they are part. I see that I say then B comma negative B equals eight, because of this equality B subscript 1 and B are replaced by their respective values, the set equality or previous relationship will take the following form. But if we understand within the relativistic concept that the magnitudes B comma B and B subscript 0 can be equal respectively, the variable unit we will have then with legitimate reason. But when B comma and V mark two points, in the sensible space that are infinitely close, it will finally be negative km divided by c squared v comma minus negative km divided by c squared 
equals x divided by c squared times km divided by b squared. Being of course v comma negative v equals x. Infinitely small quantities. It implies, therefore, ontologically, the excess of cosmic intensity of a place B in relation to another B. That is how negative Km divided by C squared V comma gives us the practical measure of a broader field where the dimensions are larger and movements faster than those appropriate to negative space. Geometrically, intelligible as a continuation of the first through the common accelerative increase between both, and for which it is worth repeating here, both elements, the positive and negative, only form a single and same variable within the geometric that carries the static course of the increase referred to. The static direction of space, which is by the way determined, the trajectory determine the trajectory that any body without its own motor must follow when passing from the field. From, that is from the positive field to the field of negative relation. It is because an element of said variable continuum is a function of time as the only remote medium in which all space is contained. Because in the end, these are nothing but true functions. As you can see, negative km divided by c squared v behaves like a center of abstraction with reference to the positive field. All of this, of course, suggests to us the illusory idea of a field of negative electricity in relation to the corresponding magnetic field. There is no doubt, then, that the electromagnetic with which it has been alleged to explain these phenomena of space is an illusion by this cosmic behavior of continuous reality and that the abstraction is fulfilled by the cosmic unevenness of time and its function of space through the course of the static acceleration increase. The elliptical tra trajectory that the body follows, follows towards space, towards the earth, is significantly confused with the vertical one that is, it appears as the development of a straight line normal to the surface of the planet. However, the layman or unreflective reader will ask, why should bodies abandon in its field go towards the earth and not towards any other point in space? Let's, let there be three elements of the elliptical space, three sensitive points of the terrestrial field. It is that every point or place B of the continuum is an element relative to Earth and to place A of the variable space contained. And will always mark a less dense sensible point or element in relation to A and T. Therefore, no body abandoned in field B will be able to follow the directions in sense BA, but rather the elliptical branch that corresponds to the cosmic unevenness of the functions B and T. The fact that the fact is that T is a predominant center because it is the most dense. As can be seen, every sensitive point or complete place of, of space is a physical function of time as that cosmic factor of rest. Then the accelerative increase is the only concept of space as the continuum par excellence of the cosmic geometric or mechanical function of time. So each space has its specific shape and in general terms its universal expression will be dE divided by dt equals x apostrophe. Being, of course, what changes according to the general shape of the place. Being, of course, what changes in the general shape of the place. 
in our case, in the case of the elliptical shape, km v equals km divided by v squared. In the n directions corresponding to the element A of the space, branch AT marked by the positive static acceleration is the only prevalent or active one. Likewise, the direction BT of the field or element B has a vector intensity greater than that appropriate for the BA, meaning no negative or positive direction other than the AT or the BT can have an effect through the static universal of space. These directions we repeat direct towards the most intense cosmic unevenness. They specify geometrically the continuum when these static directions are fulfilled in elliptical branches of seg or segments, the space contained in them is called elliptical. This is how it is explained in our science, in the true science that understands the reality of the universe, the hyperbolic continuums of the heavens and the spherical geometry of all energy. Of all energy. For this entire process of cosmic reality, in the infinite grandeur of space as a function of time, it is deduced that the impulse currents and the electromagnetic fields generated by the currents of electrical energy are nothing but mere illusions of a poorly versed spirit in analysis, or from the other that has not yet been able to become independent from the effect of science regulated by the great primers of our libraries. The same whale integral, which we initially accepted as a providence, no longer takes place for us and for myself. Only two, only mark two physical states. These two equations only mark two physical states of space referred to the same central mass, which is good and valid within law and experience. Seeing, on the other hand, that impulse currents do not exist, but rather the static acceleration that gives weight to things, it is then understood by the same circumstance of the static accelerator that when a new space is formed, a physical change or place, larger spaces less dense correspond to co cosmic actions equivalent to those of similar places, of similar spaces of smaller spaces. It is that the cosmic force of the universe is constant for all place for all places of the same field or geometric type of space and equal of course to the extension of said place and by the intensity of the sphere of the specific direction of the space corresponding to the same. In this equality V is greater than v, v comma is greater than v, and the relative extensions corresponding to these are the factors b and negative km divided by c squared b. It is clear that from this relationship that concerns us results km divided by c squared v squared minus k squared m squared divided by c to the fourth and B cube, which is enough to demonstrate our assertion that it's greater than another equation. Inequality we have to justify to justify it that B is equal without sensible error to B div divided by KM divided by C squared B squared since b equals b comma. As can be seen, static acceleration, like the cosmic force of space, geometric excess of extension with respect to the measure of a negative element, is always a minimum quality and never in such a large number so sensitive such as Newton's calculus gives us. The static acceleration at the height of the Earth, for example, differs very little from that which occurs at any distance within the same field, since it must always be considered a fulfilled law. 
The thing that Newtonian, the thing is that Newtonian acceleration is not part of the cosmic process in which the reality of space is contained, and only refers to the kinetic power developed by the sole virtue of inertia. The initial inertia in the fall. In the fall of the body it is not therefore the acceleration. Newton is wrong. We then have naturally two weights per unit of mass. The, cons the cosmic weight x divided by c squared y and the height and the weight of inertia. Thus everybody on the surface of the earth, a stone in Paris for example, has an inertial acceleration equal to 9.81 meters. That is the kinetic power accumulated in said place of Paris as the effect of geometric inertia through an entire space of through an entire wave of space 300,000 kilometers squared is the quintessential expression of space in its magnificent continuity variable it is clear then that v comma minus v equals c square space expression becomes km divided by v squared. This means that the inertial acceleration is always an integration of the static acceleration in the limit c. It is understood from all this that the rationally sensitive curve in which the direction of our plumb line contained has a limit of 300,000 kilometers squared that is 900 million kilo linear kilometers. This number differs very little from what we, from what would result if this quantity could be measured directly in space. Since it is well known that the relativistic variation of the meter through the Earth's field is insensible, is insensitive in every elliptical space in the terrestrial field for example, the elemental branch that integrates it within the geometry of constant positive curvature is, as has been said, of the value of C. Every 900 million linear kilometers, our space therefore changes direction with respect to the Earth as the predominant cosmic meter in said continuum. That is to say, the infinite direction of the plumb line will insensibly curve until they change directions at the limit of c squared. It is in a word our space, a true Gaussian medium whose element of convexity is the elliptical wave in the limit that we have mentioned. However, and this is perfectly intelligible, none of these wave none of these waves can be fulfilled exactly. Since the smallest stellar distance is enough to interrupt it in the term of a complicated geom geom geometrics of interastral space spaces. From this it follows that the limit of terrestrial space is a variable and always less than the speed of light squared. However, how then the reader will ask is his desire for truth in the relationship between Km divided by v squared and its element explained. It's that gravity or what we call inertial acceleration within its content form, constant form is the geometric result of an isolated field interrupted by the influence of the planet and stars. It is clear then that the gravity for the same reason on Earth for example is a variable but with a variation that depends on the diurnal, annual, and secular movement of the other stars that surround it, that surround us. Each relationship or scheme of the relative position of the stars in relation to the Earth determines an interastral geometry, that ontological expansion of the sky, sufficient to produce a change of intensity in the static acceleration. The changes intensity the ch this change in intensity is determined naturally in the same in the sense of less okay in the sense of less 
the inertia acceleration becomes therefore less intense and it is logical a more rarefied space determines for all the bodies expressed by it a greater volume and consequently a decrease in the mass then in km divided by v square form when it comes to these cosmic circumstances our m factor earth's math its mass itself decreases there it is if not an empirical proof of this whole process of truth the phenomenon of tides